Hi everybody, I'm DJ Foster, joined by Grand Valley State head football coach Matt Mitchell for this 2016 GLIAC football preview. Coach, a great year for you guys last year, 12-3 and three overall, uh, a great postseason run. You had uh, really nice road victories in the playoffs uh, at Ashland, at Ferris State, at Colorado State Pueblo. Uh, you lose not a huge class uh, of seniors uh, quantity-wise, but some very good quality, obviously, with Matt Judon, Kirk Spencer, uh, Jamie Potts, Brandon Revenberg, among others. When you bring a lot of guys back who have made plays on both sides of the ball for you the past couple of years, talk about some of those returners and uh, and what you expect from those guys as they work into uh, enhanced roles this season. Certainly, as you mentioned, uh, last year uh, it was nice to make those runs in the playoffs. I think that brought a lot of experiences to uh, players on our roster, first-time starters on our roster, those uh, winner-go-home type experiences, especially on the road. Uh, it's It's hard to replicate that. And so... Uh, we'll, we'll use some of our experiences we gained in 2015 to try to build on that heading here into fall camp. We're really focused on, uh, you know, ourselves trying to get better on a daily basis here within fall camp, the standard coach cliche. Uh, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, um, you know, obviously uh, the quarterback position is a pretty critical position. Mm -hmm. I thought last year uh, Bart Williams being a first-time starter, starter having to handle some of the expectations of playing quarterback at Grand Valley uh, did a good job and, and, and really continue to get better. Uh, I still think – he and we have room to improve. Um, when you look back on last year, um, you know, we try to get clean up some of those picks. Some of those picks um, are on him, but some of those picks are on us too as a coaching staff, taking a look at <coughs> route combinations, um, the way that we're doing things, try to clean th some things up to help him, and then um, you know, trying to get back to uh, running the ball a little bit more effectively so we don't have to drop back and, and put him in those situations maybe uh, as much. So he can get better. I think he knows he can get better. I think the the next big step for him, too, is to take over uh, a leadership role here on our team. Uh, last year, uh, we didn't really thrust him into that position. I think it, it naturally kind of occurred as the season progressed. But we, um, we we need to have him step up this year. We lose some really good senior leaders. <clears throat> as you mentioned, Matt Judon, uh, one, of, one of the best leaders we've ever had in our program since I've been here 12 years and has got drafted in the fifth round and is in NFL camp right now. We're going to lose that, that credibility, that right. leadership, a lot of those things. And Bart's got to be the guy on the offensive side of the ball that can start to step up and do those things. So... Really looking um, for him to try to take that step. And, and, and really, um, there's competition at that position, too. And uh, we need to continue the competition. I think everybody that watched us uh, last year saw Ali Ajami has a unique skill set. He's really had a good spring. He's continued to get better. We've got uh, Ryan West. We've moved him out to wideout. He's going to take a look at him out of wideout. And then we've got, uh, you know, two freshmen that redshirted last year that, uh, you know, did a real good job in spring practice and are continuing to have strong summers here back on campus. That's Matt Crable from down in Cincinnati mm -hmm. and uh, Cole Katopka from Chicagoland area. I think both those guys have gotten better. So we don't want anybody in our program to take anything for granted. Um, you know, I've, I've been here quite a time. We had that thing with Heath Parling and, and Isaiah Grimes with yep. injuries. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, when you play as many games as we did last year, there's some wear and tear, and uh, you got to have guys ready to go. So uh, I, I feel like my, you know, time as a head coach here heading into year seven, this is as – as deep a quarterback group as, as we've ever had. I think we've recruited well, we've developed well, we've retained those guys, and uh, it's it's really a strong position. So start there, you know, from a wideout perspective, uh, you do return some guys that made some plays for us last year, uh, most notably Matt Williams, a dual sport guy here for us, coming off a great spring for, uh, you know, our baseball team mm -hmm. here, and so he's coming back uh, for his senior year. Uh, Brandon Bean uh, was really off to a fast start in 2015, then broke his foot uh, against Michigan Tech. We lost him for the rest of the year and tried to get him back late, but just, you know, wasn't quite the same. He's having an extremely strong summer. I mean, he looks great. Nick Dodson played as a true freshman for us last year and uh, stepped in and, <clears throat> you know, made some really big plays for us as a freshman. And you can just tell he's got a lot strong in the weight room. He had a great spring ball. He's learning more about the game. And, you know, there's some other guys. We've added some transfers uh, at that position. We've got some um, guys that uh, are coming off redshirt freshman years or coming off redshirt years in general that are starting to step up and, and, and starting to go. So I think we have depth at wide receiver. We have some proven playmakers, and we have some emerging talent. We've got to try to figure out, you know, how that goes and continues. And then along with that, you throw in the tight ends. I thought Nick Kaiser did a good job last year. Uh, a lot of people have followed our program. We added a, a transfer from Air Force Academy, Pete Sender, last January. He had a really good spring. Look for things out of him, Brian Moran. There's some depth at that position. So I think probably the biggest question mark is our offensive line. If you had to press me right now, sitting your head in a preseason practice, I have no idea who our starting five would be. Um, we have really got to work hard to solidify that. I think that we've got some young talent uh, at that position, but it's unproven talent. Uh, we've added some guys there from a transfer perspective, too, that could potentially step in and be a, a part of that mix. But most of the guys didn't go through spring ball that we'd added this summer, you know, that came in. And so 
it's going to be really interesting. I think that's the one thing that we're going to have to really manage as coaches and watch and see how that that envelops. I, I don't know what our starting five is necessarily going to look like on that, you know, on the uh, up front of the first game when that's something that's going to be could change day to day based on people's performance and expectations. So we'll have enough guys to roll through there. <clears throat> it's a matter who's going to step up and play well and get a, get the job done up front. And obviously, you've got a, um, some experience back at the running back position, which mm -hmm. can help some of those offensive linemen. I think. You know, Terrell Doris, who was a little banged up last year, uh, and he had a frustrating junior season with some injuries. He had a great spring, has looked great this summer. Um, you know, I was talking to him. He's he's very much a leader on this team, is coming back. And then anybody watched that run late there in the playoffs saw the electric explosive ability of Martavius Carter. Right. Um, he has <clears throat> gotten stronger. He's gotten faster. He's gotten more knowledgeable. This offseason has really been really big for him. And then we have some other uh, younger guys that I think will progress. We took a Christian Lumpkin, and we moved him from wide out back to running back and some – a couple other freshmen that redshirted that'll be coming off. So there'll be some competition at running back too. So offensively, you know, we got to try to, you know, mix and match the pieces of the puzzle at all the skill positions and, and to obviously get that starting offensive line straight. Uh, defensively, we return a lot of guys defensively. There's really a lot of guys gone, but we still have a lot of competition. I think we have some younger guys that are going to be fighting to push some older guys uh, throughout the course of the fall practices. And you know, we lost two seniors off that group, Brad Horling and also Matt Judon. It's going to be impossible to replace the production of Matt Judon with all the sacks that he had last right. year and what he did for our team. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, with, I think we've got some other returning starters up front that can fill in for him. I think DJ Hogan, if you watch the tape from last year, um, he was he was really good. He didn't have the eye-popping dominant numbers that Matt did, but he impacted our defense uh, tremendously. And so we look for him to be a leader up front. We've got, uh, you know, three linebackers I feel good about, and Colin Slosher, David Talley, and Joe Moran. You start looking at our safety depth with Garrett Pounier. Corners, there'll be an intense, fierce competition at corners. We played, you know, three, four of those guys last year. We'll continue to probably play three, four. Whoever starts are the guys that probably perform well in camp. So while we have some guys back, there's still going to be a lot of competition on the defensive side of the ball, and you infuse some talent that's coming in there. It's coming that redshirted. Um, I, I think it'll be exciting to see how that group progresses, you know. <clears throat> we all still have a really bad taste in our mouth on both sides of the ball, but probably on the defensive side of the ball especially about the Shepard game. Just gave up way too many big plays in that game, and we're so close to compete for another national championship. That this isn't a group on the defensive side of the ball, or in general, DJ is very complacent. I think it's a group that's really, um, you know, had a good run, had his experiences, but the fact of the matter, uh, when we needed our best performance out in West Virginia, we didn't come up with that, and that's no diss on Shepard. Uh, they played extremely well, but we don't feel like we played our potential. I think that's driven a lot of us. That's driven the head coach, assistant coaches, a lot of our players in our program. Um, that, that experience out there has driven us to keep, you know, grinding and working hard. We're really just focused on Grand Valley, Grand Valley football, and heading to camp and just trying to get better on a daily basis. About a week and a half out from uh, the start of fall camp, what do you see or what do you maybe hope will be a strength of this team early on, and what are some things you still need to work on? Obviously, there's some gaps that need to be filled in uh, with, with seniors that graduated, but, uh, you know, with, with about a month before the uh, the season opener against <laughs> Tiffin here in Lover Stadium. Well, I think the big deal, you know, you know fast forward a year, you got uh, continuity on the staff. Uh, that That's really huge, and I don't think a lot of people – realized we completely overhauled our offense last year. You know, we were heading into fall camp, um, running. We had those 15 spring practices, but running some completely new stuff offensively. And if you look throughout the course of our season, there was an evolution of our offense throughout the course of the season. There was an evolution schematically that we kept kind of figuring out what we were getting better at. There was also an evolution at the quarterback position. So for a year later, you're looking at um, more, better understanding of what we're doing offensively. I think you're looking at a signal caller that has more <coughs> experience, and he's going to be ready to go. And you look at a defensive staff now that's been together. Uh, last year was the first year uh, where I stepped away from the defensive staff. Those guys continue to progress and evolve. And, and some returning starters on that side of the ball. So I, I think the biggest thing is continuity, you know, staff continuity, player continuity, scheme continuity, strength and conditioning continuity. There's a lot of uh, carryover. Uh, so we're not having to teach a ton of new concepts. We've tweaked some things here and there, um, but the, the, the plan is in place. And so that allows us to really jump off here this first practice and hit the ground running and really get to work to try to get every individual better and also try to evaluate some of our talent, our newer talent, and see how those, those pieces of the puzzle can fit in with the rest of those guys that are coming back. You led the nation in attendance last year, uh, again, for the third time in the last four years. And you'll have six home games here in Lovers, including the first three weeks of the year. Talk about your your, set, your season schedule a little bit. Uh, the three home games uh, in a row to start the year. You have Ferris State, Truman State, and Finley coming on later in the year, too. Uh, how does the schedule play out for you? 
Well, it's unique. I think it's unique in a couple ways. First of all, you talk about three straight home games to open up. I'm not sure we've had that in my time here. Um, we always get great crowds, especially early in the season, so I'm really looking forward to that. Thursday, uh, you know, September 1st at opener against Tiffin, I think that's our first week of classes. <coughs> Excuse me, so we should have a ton of people here for that game. We've got our new scoreboard installation. It mm -hmm. should be up and running by there, a new $1.4 million scoreboard, so it should be an awesome atmosphere for that game and then we finished with three of the four on the road. Um, right. the, the good part about that, we had some of those experiences last year. We played six of our last seven games on the road. So our guys are very familiar with that and what it takes to win on the road and do those type of things. I think the other unique thing about the schedule, it's been a while since we opened with a conference game. Uh, the last mm -hmm. couple of years we've opened with a non-conference game. And uh, with the strength of the GLIAC, um, obviously Tiffin gave us everything that we could handle last year down in Tiffin, Ohio. <clears throat> it's gonna be really, uh, critical to get off to a good start, uh, especially within this league and how competitive this conference is. And so, uh, open up with a conference game. Um, there's there's no time to waste. You know, with our preseason camp, we got to be the best version of Grand Valley we could be. It's not going to be perfect game one, uh, but we understand the test that uh, Tiffin is going to present, and we're we got to try to prepare ourselves for that. So, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great schedule. It's kind of the last run of some of the GLIAC schools, yep. <clears throat> and uh, an opportunity to play those guys. You know, one last time before some of those schools leave our league. And, um, you know, it should be exciting. It should be a really exciting, uh, you know, home schedule and away schedule, too. You led me into my next question, my final question for you. What, the GLIAC as a whole, you had three teams make the playoffs last year. Obviously, you defeated Ashland and Ferris State in the playoffs last year, so you were the furthest one advancing. Uh, but you mentioned this will be the last year as we know the GLIAC as it's currently constructed. So what do, you, what do you see the GLIAC playing out as? It's probably the best it's been since you've been here. Oh, no doubt. I think I've told a lot of people that. You know, I got here in 2004, and uh, the level of parity is at an all-time high um, within this league. It's it's. Uh, it's 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 a league where you can't you can't you can't have a, a week where you don't play well. You know you'll get beat. I think you saw that even with us last year. And so, um, the, you know I, I don't know <clears throat> who's going to be good. We kind of take them one one at a time. We really click on the tape and try to see there. But there's a lot of teams that have a lot of returning starters back. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of tight games within this league last year. And really, especially when you take a look at a lot of the Michigan schools. I mean, there's there's some returning quarterbacks coming back. There's some. I mean, the two Upper Peninsula schools got both their quarterbacks back. Wayne's got their quarter. There's a lot of returning quarterbacks in this league, mm -hmm. and that's kind of unique, especially, like I said, up in Michigan. And uh, same thing with Ashland's got their quarterback back. So there's some experienced players coming back in this league. It's going to be extremely, extremely competitive, uh, this whole league in general. So you, it comes down to sometimes the scheduling. There's some, some teams we play and don't play. Like we don't play a couple teams this year that, that we had um, played in the past. We pick up a couple new opponents, like you mentioned, Northern Michigan. We're mm -hmm. picking up for the first time. We haven't seen them in a couple years. So uh, it'll be a f it'll be interesting dynamic in 2016. Like I said, a lot of returning players, teams playing teams they haven't played in the past, including Grand Valley playing some new teams and teams they haven't played. And it should be a really fantastic year, I think, for the GLIAC. There's a lot of good coaches, a lot of good players in this league, and it'll be a, it'll be a fight all the way through, all the way to the finish. For Grand Valley State Head Football Coach Matt Mitchell and DJ Foster, thanks for watching this GLIAC football preview.